Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Manchester family finds dead man in front yard. A family from Bonita Way in Mandeville, Manchester, woke up to find the body of a man in their front yard Tuesday morning. The body, which was found after residents reported the hearing explosions Monday night, is believed to be that of Jerome Ferran, who is reportedly from Grantham Address in Clarendon. Information which in reporters indicated that around 8 or 7 p.m. Monday, residents heard loud explosions in the area and summoned the police. The police reported they visited the area but did not observe anything irregular. Following a search, the police said no one was seen in the area. Around 7 a.m. on Tuesday, police said occupants of a premises on Bonito Way awoke and saw the body of the now deceased lying in front of their yard and called the authorities. Police arrived and saw the lifeless man with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the upper body. The scene was processed and the body removed to the morgue pending a post-mortem examination. Two spent casing were seen at a section of Bonita Crescent, the police stated. Five shops destroyed in fire at Forum Fishing Village in Portmore. Fire destroyed five shops at the Forum Fishing Village in Portmore, St. Catherine. Details, including the causing of the blaze, are unclear. I did grace of Father God. Let me never sleep in a mishap last night, said a bar operator, Tanisha Scotland, who said she left the area around 2 a.m. Scott said she was at home when she received a call about 7 a.m. alerting her to the fire. Me lose everything, nothing no left, she stated. She appealed for assistance. Last year, fire destroyed 12 business establishments at the location. Man shot dead near hospital in St. James. A man was shot dead at the entrance to all nurses' quarters at the Connor Regional Hospital in Mount Salem, St. James, Tuesday morning. The man, who is still unidentified, was reported to shot dead by a life of her arm holder, who has a business at the nurses' quarter, reporters understand. Reports are that about 10 a.m., the life of her arm holder was at his business establishment when he saw the now deceased, who was being a nuisance to other people, run in his direction. The businessman ran inside his establishment and closed the shop door. It is alleged that the unidentified man began beating on the door. He then threw stones, broke a glass window, and breached the door. The lights of her arm holder, the police said, became fearful and pulled his firearm, and when the man managed to open the door, he discharged five shots in his direction, hitting him in the upper body. The intruder fell to the ground, and the businessman alerted the police, who, upon arrival, saw the body and retrieved the firearm. Police said the deceased man is of dark complexion, medium build, about 5 feet 8 inches in height. He was clad in a dark colored short pants and shirtless. Several persons injured in multi vehicle accident in Portmore. Several persons were injured in a motor vehicle accident at the Passage Ford Drive and Newland Road intersections in Portmore. A number of persons were reported to rush to the hospital. The incident, which happened approximately 7 30 p.m., and involve a minibus and at least three motor cars has caused traffic congestion in the area. Emergency services responded to the incident. Family alleges neglect over cancer patients' treatment at KPH. Family and friends of Renisha Towson, a mother of three diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer a year ago, says she is not receiving the urgent care she needs at Kingston Public Hospital. Towson's sister Shanice told reporters, that caregivers at the Kingston-based medical facility appear to have given up on her sister, whom she described as a fighter. Renisha, whose plight was highlighted in the media last month, is a 37-year-old mother of three girls. We had her at UWI Hospital first, and she didn't like the treatment, so we moved her to Kingston Public Hospital. Each time she comes here, they keep her the most three days, and then they send her back home. Hours a night, we have to jump up and I bring her back at the hospital because our bliss is still bleeding, Shanice stated. Shanice added that on Monday, Renisha was taken to hospital to dress the wound and later had to be rushed back to the hospital because of breathing difficulties. According to Towson, her sister was in dire need of oxygen, but was told none was available, where she was being treated at the time. She alleged that the family had to wait the patient around the hospital, as there were also no porters available to help with transport. No porter not there here to assist, we bring in her. They sent her to do an x-ray, so mommy had to be pushing her through the hospital, asking her the x-ray section day, she stated. We think them right her off, because at this stage rate reach, 
and the fact that it's the cancer spread and emotional shunning is supported. Thousand said she just wants her sibling to get the care she needs. Them and no God, then can't say she done for, she no done for, because me know my sister as a fighter, she stated. When it's a friend of the family alleges neglect in her niece's treatment at the facility. It's the way how persons are addressing her, making her feel less than a person. She's a human being, she's somebody's child, somebody's sister, somebody's aunt, somebody's mother, she stated. At the end of the day, when you come to somebody's bedside, you can't address them as if they're nothing. When you come to administer medication to a patient, you must make them feel comfortable, no matter the situation they're going through. No matter how bad your day is, your patient is not your priority. Thousand's family is now seeking to get her treatment overseas, believing she will receive better care abroad. An account on the popular GoFundMe website was set up to aid Thousand's cancer treatment last month. So far, she has received U.S. $8,125 towards her U.S. $50,000 goal. Ballard's Valley residents hopeful as search for missing Britain enters fourth day. Residents of Ballard's Valley in St. Elizabeth are optimistic that the strategic search for the British national Robert Dyer, which involved the use of canines in the woods they have been sorting since Sunday, will end positively. It's a very sad period and at this time, we're praying and still hopeful that he is alive. Kerry Ella Thomas, a member of the Ballard's Valley Community Development Committee, told reporters on Monday, as efforts to locate the 60-year-old man continues. Dyer, who arrived in Jamaica on November 3rd and was staying with relatives in St. Elizabeth, reported a gut loss after going out for a nature walk in the hilly forested area on Sunday. The citizens are really cooperative, especially the young men in the area. They have been there since Sunday after the news broke. They have been in the woods helping out with the search, she added. She said that while the elevated interest of residents in locating the missing man may be the result of a reward being placed on finding him. Many others were willing to venture into the woods as soon as the alarm was raised. Honestly, I heard that there is a reward, but even before there was a reward, three young men, one of whom I am related to, all went into the woods late Sunday evening, Elliot Thompson said. She said the three young men who went in search of Dare on Sunday lost their bearings and had difficulty finding their way back home. While they were still in the woods, it got dark for them, so they lost their way and they stayed until Monday morning, Elliot Thompson stated. Acting Superintendent of Police College Minto, head of the St. Elizabeth Police Division, said more than 250 residents were assisting in the search and rescue operation up to Tuesday. He noted that they were desperately trying to locate Dyer, who was unable to locate his way back to his house where he was based. The Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Jamaica Defense Force are leading the search effort with canine units from both forces also taking part. We would have already gone through miles of terrain and the search is still ongoing as we continue our efforts to locate this individual mental stated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell.